All right, this piece is new. I just wrote this yesterday. Um, Patty, if you could, can I get a little bit of light, please? I usually give a little backstory right before I read a piece, but I'm just going to go in. Roughly a month and a half ago, my youngest nephew came up to me and said, Theo, do you believe in monsters? I looked the little boy square in his innocence, let the deception roll off my forked tongue with the ease that seemed rehearsed, and said, Jackson, you know monsters aren't real. In that moment, my long-standing view of never lying to children disintegrated like a vampire in the sunlight. I felt my convictions transform within me like a werewolf, writhing and reeling in agony under the full moon of my hypocrisy. I went from Jekyll to Hyde, malformed, and along with me, my principles, but I just couldn't tell him the truth because not only do I believe in monsters, but I've seen them with my own eyes. Yes, sir. They walk among us disguised as men pretending to be human, monsters that would snatch away your slumber to sell you back your dreams, pestilent predators hunting down our happiness for sport, brooding and leering, living among us, but only adults, only adults can see them because children still have that filmy membrane layer of innocence over their eyes. But in recent generations, that filmy layer seems to peel away earlier and earlier and earlier into their childhood. Yes, it does. I couldn't form my lips to tell him that I saw my first monster when I was only a few years older than he is now. That I armed myself with wooden stakes, silver bullets, holy water, and crucifixes, but that these weapons were of little defense against these beasts. These were not just witches I could douse with water. Woo! So I'm gonna snap for myself, because this shit is getting me. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell him that not only do I believe in monsters, but that his uncle is a mad scientist who created several monsters of his own in his mental laboratory. That he crossed the DNA of several opposing emotions, spliced the genes of his thoughts, mutating the genetic makeup of his opinions, giving birth to creatures so foul they could muscle the Jabberwocky into submission. So malevolent they could send the Leviathan back into his abyss. So terrifying they could make the boogeyman wet himself as he trembles, trembling, coward in a fetal position. So vile, so twisted, so vulgar they would make Beelzebub step this game up. Mm -hmm. Mm. Monsters. Monsters with putrid breath, hulking clumsy things with their knuckles dragging along the brimstone pavements of my iniquity. Eyes moist and burning with hatred, trust hanging lifelessly from their horns, teeth sparsely residing in a mouthful of discontent, dripping with the acidic saliva of deceptions I've endured. Oh, my beautiful beasts. No, I couldn't tell them. I couldn't tell them that even though I created these monsters, I grew to hate them for what they showed me about myself. And the only way to combat them was to become an even more horrible monster. And what I became was so disconnected, so savage, I sent my monsters running to the furthest corridors of their realm. Now they hide in the closet and under the bed because they're more afraid of me than I ever was of them. But I just couldn't tell him. How could I tell him that not only do I believe in monsters, but that he comes from a long line of mad scientists? His lab genetically predisposed with all the equipment he'll ever need to create monsters of his own. No, I couldn't tell him. But one day he'll learn the truth on his own. He'll see the true, morbid, disfigured face of humanity, and I'm afraid he'll think back to the day his uncle lied to him and prefer that I had prepared him. So now it's been almost two months since I've seen him. Because I don't have the audacity to look into those four-year-old eyes after what I've done. Mm. Thank you.